All right, so we're here at GDC Europe and we're talking to Class Casting from Game for Cello. Thank you a lot for doing the interviews. It's a pleasure. Oh, great. So let's start off right away. So in this beautiful orange booth, <laughs> we're here. Okay, so in your keynote tomorrow, you're speaking about changes in the business models of games. So what are the advantages of free-to-play games? Uh, it's obviously uh, the very, very low hurdle of entrance. You can just try the game out and decide yourself if you want to pay for the game or if you would like to play for free, which is totally fine with us, by the way. Uh, <laughs> or if you would like to check out another game. And uh, it's just the business model that is uh, uh, the most user-friendly. Do you think uh, that uh, free-to-play models and the other business models will coexist in future, or will we only see free-to-play? Uh, there will always be a place for, for all the business models that are out there. There will always be a full price, there will always be something like uh, time cards, like World of Warcraft in China, for example. And there will always be uh, any other business model that is out there right now. Um, in the end, it's about the dominance of, of business models and there we have today a dominance of the full price model and we will see a free-to-play dominance. Um, what is the most important lesson you personally learned um, as a developer of online games from when you started with Wogen des Schicksals um, up to now? Um, actually, the most important lesson made me start Gameforge. So it is something like, whoa, there is a business model there, whoa, you can eventually live doing what you really want to do and so I, I, I basically stumbled into into founding this company um, it was just I had a hobby suddenly I earned money with it and then I founded a company and nobody was thinking of such a success okay so there are there times that you wish you wouldn't have founded it because it's lots of work or do you always think great I'm still doing everything I enjoy uh, I am doing everything I enjoy so I don't want to do any other job I really do this because I, I love the business, I love the company especially, uh, all the people I work with obviously, and uh, I don't want to do anything else. Do you think there's something like a European perspective on games, something that could be presented with this event and to the public? Um, I think the European markets are quite different from, from the Northern American, US and Canada. So we have a far lower dominance of, of the consoles, uh, like everybody has a console in, in North America, but it's a very, very small uh, percentage here, actually, in comparison. Um, another thing is that the European markets are, are quite diversified. So there are more languages, more cultures, more special behaviors and cultural things you, you really have to care about when you want to do games for, for smaller countries. Um, and that's something the US companies, for example, don't really understand. They develop titles for their big market, and that's the US and Canada. And, uh, Countries like, like France, like Germany, like the UK are nice and they focus on those, but there their world ends. And that's one of the reasons why there aren't really games in, in other countries, where we have been pretty successful localizing our games there, bringing their games there, and actually so being a pioneer in, in offering games that the players from those countries actually can play. And so I think the markets are quite different and, and something like a, a, a GDC Europe is, is necessary. Okay, so talking about great game experience, you just uh, released that you will be uh, releasing Guild 1400 mm -hmm. and it's very promising and um, it's of course based on a, fa a famous franchise. Mm -hmm. So um, do you believe it's safer to rely on well-known franchises mm -hmm. or to go with a very new IP or and will we see more kind of these um, franchise games? in? in the future with Gameforge? Um, I think we probably will. So on the one hand, with, with games we developed ourselves that don't rely on a franchise like Icarium or O-Game, they are really huge and popular and we actually created these franchises and were able to do so. Um, we had the luck to uh, stumble across uh, the opportunity to get the franchise, uh, the guild, and the development team that actually created all the guild titles that uh, are one of our development studios today. So it was a unique opportunity and we tried it out and we'll see the game being out, I think, in one or two months. Okay, great, we're looking forward to that. So communities, of course, are a very important part of every mm -hmm. kind of online game. So how would you describe the typical Gameforge customer and how difficult is it as a developer to suit everyone's needs? Um, it's always difficult to please everybody. Um, 
so when you look through our games, it's a broad portfolio and some, some focus on the core gamer. So there we have a male 15 to, to 30. Some have, are more related to, to women where we actually see uh, girls and young women play. Uh, it's, it's pretty broad. Well, could you please tell us your funniest community story? I don't really know if it's funny, but uh, the thing I, I always find funny again is that I, I stumble across so many people that actually, for example, played my, my very first game and now they are somewhere in the gaming industry doing a job. I stumble across them because uh, I just meet them on a conference or somewhere and, and this is always an experience and they are like, well, you are the class that actually did and I like, yeah, I am. And uh, it's, it's always very funny. It has to be an amazing feeling, really. Yeah, it is. <laughs> What's the most important reason for you to attend events like GDC Europe? Is it networking, is it business matching, or simply the panels, or whatever, what is it? It's, it's all of those. Okay. So it's, it's, it's pretty important to, to see what the other guys are talking about, uh, to, to, to catch the new trends and see what, what they are thinking about them. On the other hand, obviously we are, we are meeting a lot of our business partners here, a lot of development studios that we think about doing projects with. Um, it's, it's a very broad, a broad perspective and uh, it's, it's pretty unique for, for such a conference. Okay, great. So here's our last question. So what's your favorite game of all times? Besides your own one, of course. Poo. Um, <laughs> favorite game of all times uh, is Alpha Centauri. It's uh, a science fiction uh, sequel of the famous civilization brand, actually uh, taking place after the space shuttle left the Earth and the remains of humanity land on a, on a foreign planet. Pretty unique game design and I still love it. And as far as I know, I still hold the world record. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> so good reason to love the game. All right. Thank you very much for talking to us. It was a pleasure and have a nice day, have a nice evening and good day tomorrow. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Okay. <laughs>